This presentation is an introduction to GM Saphir, the free preprocessor used to build input files for the software Saphir, and we are going to present the general features of this software. Once it has been installed, you can start GM Saphir as any other window application. Here I created a shortcut on the desktop here, so I just double click on this icon and this window appears. It is this screen is divided into different windows. As GM Saphir is based on the mesh generator GMSH developed at the University of Liège and Louvain in Belgium, you have the traditional bar with the scroll down menu here. You have on the left in white what we will call the tool window. Here on the right in blue, we have what we will call the drawing window. And here you can activate an error or message window that can be interesting as well. They might be useful information here. You can close it or open it as you like. When you start a project, it's good to start here in the file menu. You see you could open an existing project, but we assume we start here with a new project. So you click here, new, and you are asked to select the folder in which you want to locate the files used by GM Saphir to describe your model. By default, the folder is the one in which GM Saphir dot py, that's the Python script, is located. And you see that in this folder, we have two other files present, one called untitled.g4s and one untitled.go. And this is good to know that if you forget to come in this new window and you create a model, the model will be located by default in the folder where GM Saphir executable is located and the name of the two files will be untitled. So it is possible to retrieve your model. It's not completely lost, but it would be a little bit more complicated. So here, we don't want to have our files located here. We want to locate them in another folder that we will select here. For example, in tutorial. And uh, notice that it is not possible here to create a new folder. You have to choose among existing folders. I give a name here, for example, introduction. So this is the name of the two files which will be created by GM Saphir to store the model. So record. I forgot to give the extension .go, so I use it. And as a kernel, I have to use open cascade, so I use it as well. So now we are ready to create the model. We first should create the geometry of the model by adding nodes, lines, surfaces, volumes, etc. Once the geometry has been created, we would have to apply what we will call Saphir properties, for example, what kind of material we have, what kind of fire curve, what, what kind of loads, what kind of supports. And uh, in order to do that, it's good to check in which problem type you are. And you have to choose between thermal 2D, thermal 3D, or structural 2D, structural 3D. You may notice that we don't have here torsion analysis. In fact, torsion is contained within the thermal 2D analysis Look here, you, we could activate run torsional analysis. We will not do it for the moment. So we assume we are doing a model for thermal 2D. Once the Saphir properties have been applied to the model, we have to create the mesh by dif with different options here. And when the mesh has been created, we can now ask GM Saphir to create the input file for Saphir by clicking here. But before we click here, it, we have to give the name to this input file. It's typical to give the same name 
to this input file of Saphir as the name we gave for the model, but it's not mandatory. We could use another name. Here, here we will use the same name, introduction. Dot in. And if we click here, and if we went through all the actions I mentioned, we would have a Saphir input file. This input file, once we run Saphir, will create a TEM file that can be used for 2D beam models. If we want to use this temperature distribution in a 3D model, we know we have to add torsion properties. In that case, we would click here, run torsion, activate. There are some additional constraints to put on the model to fix at least one node. And now we have to change the name and we just add to the name that was used to create the TEM file, we add bar T. And if we click now here, create Saphir in, of course, we must not change the geometry, we must, must not change the mesh. This will create a, an input file that will be used by Saphir to create a file called introduction bar TOR, and this is a file where the torsion properties will be located. And if we have a model with 3D beam finite elements, these elements will use the TEM file and the TOR file. And uh, contrary to what was requested until version 2020 of Saphir, in the new version since 2021, there is no need to copy the content of the torsion file in the TEM file. These two files will live separately. And that's it for the introduction.